you bring up the one or two people. I, I, I think someone that I, 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 we'll see how this goes. Um, this uh, was taken from your book, Sold Out, page one hundred and fifty-two. <laughs> what did um, I say? Oh, anything God. that Jeremy Clarkson uh, <laughs> hates. That much has got to be a good thing. I make a point of loving all the things he hates. I use him as a moral compass. Yeah. He's a very useful man. He's essential. Now, in <laughs> News from Gardenia, it doesn't take very long at all. Page nine. I headed I north to start giving me the opportunity to fly deliberately low over Jeremy Clarkson's house. <laughs> he starts his journey from Enstone Airfield, which Jeremy Clarkson's property he backs onto. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. So, Top Gear broke down their, their electric cars uh, just outside our doors yeah. uh, here now uh, for, for, for that. And lots of people followed them around uh, with, with their mobile phones. And, and there was a lot of controversy at the time about whether that was a fair judgment of an electric car. I mean, what's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, it, it, was absolutely, uh, it was absolutely fair in the sense that it was Top Gear doing it. So it was exactly what everyone would have expected. Um, I mean, the, the only unfortunate thing from, from their point of view is that as in most modern cars now, but particularly the Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi that they were driving that day, have very sophisticated onboard computers which record every single, like, not, not just like where you've gone, but where the throttle position is <laughs> as you're moving. I mean, it records every single thing that you do. And so, of course, they'd recorded, uh, Nissan had a record of exactly what they'd done. So they'd been driving the car around in a circle. Uh, outside Lincoln for, a couple of, uh, I think, an hour and a half to, to get the batteries low enough so that when they drove in, it would run out, which it's fine because it's television and it's fake. You know, w when we're in Red Dwarf, we're not actually in space. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've met some fans, particularly in America, who would find that shocking. But it is true. We don't have a gravity machine that keeps us on the floor. But so in that sense, it's fine. I mean, it, the, the slightly dubious thing is, I mean, the thing that worries me the most about Top Gear, I think, of all, is that... The TV show is a BBC production. It's funded by the licence payers, and it's funny. I watch it. I think they're very funny. Uh, the Top Gear Live, which is when they do huge uh, 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 arena shows, is sponsored by Shell, which is fine because they're a big oil company and they drive cars. But I worry that there's undue influence, and it's not acknowledged. And it's when things aren't acknowledged. If, if, if Jeremy Clarkson went on stage at the live shows and said, we're sponsored by Shell, we love petrol. <laughs> and we're very proud that they've given us seriously large amounts of money to do these shows, that would be fine. I, would, I have no argument, but it's kind of not acknowledged, and that's what's dodgy. So therefore, I suspect the bias, where the bias is coming from in their opinion. I mean, they, and I think what's also interesting is that they are shifting. I mean, from the, they did a review of the Tesla a few years ago that was a debacle of lies and deceit and, um, and uh, you know, a, an absolute disaster, a very uh, upsetting for the people at Tesla. Uh, and, and they went to enormous lengths. He went to, he was like bludgeoning that these cars are rubbish. And now he's actually saying these cars are the future. <laughs> Yeah. He's understood that you know we're going to we're going to do this thing that's called running out of fossil fuel. Yeah. Uh, not so, now, not next week, but you know at yeah, some very point. soon, and we're just not going to have a, a, a choice no. uh, there. But I mean, electric cars. I mean, why why even you know be a support or, or, or go for those? Why why not just sort of go against the car at all? Do you have a vision of uh, different transport systems? Absolutely. I mean, I think the thing uh, that uh, that once you once you sit, I, I was a petrol head without any question, and I and I had tests of electric cars a few years ago, and this is purely through Scrappy, but it was through knowing people that were involved in that world. And when I went in an electric car that went much faster, uh, naught to 60, than a Ferrari or a Porsche or um, an American muscle car, we were talking naught to 60 in uh, 2.8 seconds, which is like being fired out of a gun. And there's no noise. It's the most extraordinary experience. And I went, those old cars are rubbish. And they suddenly, they, it dates them. I mean, it's that, it's that extraordinary thing where you go, hang on a minute, the piston engine is a, is a steam age technology you know it is a you know <laughs> and so it's very very old technology that we're completely locked into so not only does the electric car in some ways break that paradigm and it is a disruptive technology it also then makes you immediately question about ownership and I think one of the key things that I've learned in the last few years is that at this very moment that we're all sitting in this room 90% of the world's cars that are functioning that are able to be driven at this moment 90% of them are sitting still doing nothing. It's this monstrous, ludicrous, absurd waste of a brilliant, fantastic engineering resource. Why does it work like that? And it makes you question those things, what, you know, that whole paradigm. And, and what is interesting is I got that information from automotive manufacturers. 
and they know it's being questioned, and they're beginning to wonder, wait a minute, this, isn't, this doesn't work. It's unsustainable. Somebody once asked a question when I was with someone from a, a, a car manufacturer. Uh, as a criticism of electric cars, there isn't enough lithium to make enough, all these electric cars. We can't replace it. And the, the guy said, there isn't enough steel. There isn't <laughs> enough rubber. Not everyone in the world can have a car. And what's really changing the whole picture is China and India that there's these two huge new markets. I mean, China, massive new market. Uh, and there isn't enough stuff to make cars so that everyone in China can have a car. It doesn't matter. We'd have to, even if we gave them all our cars, so we had no cars anywhere else in the rest of the world, there still isn't enough for China. So something has got to change. And it, it, when something has got to change, it changes very fast. I see. So, I mean, the success with uh, carpool um, has, has really highlighted uh, the electric car, the electric car you use. And, uh, I mean, you jumped straight out of your car today and, and so told me, the first thing you said to me, uh, after saying hello, of course, uh, was uh, the miles per gallon that, that, yes. that, that you achieved. You know, and that is, is, you seem very happy with it. Now, do you have any favourite guests from Carpool? And I have the hundreds that have gone there. Now, I've got a, I've got a name prepared. Uh, I'm going to give you three, three guesses for the one I've got prepared. <laughs> well, as a favourite guest? Yes. I mean, I really don't have a favourite guest because they've all been... A, a big surprise. I mean, the biggest surprise for me was the Dutch comedian Hans Tuwen, who I didn't, I'd never heard of, and who is, uh, I think, a, a fairly extremely rude comedian, but very, very funny guy. And he does, and he was, uh, you know, he has a very faint Dutch accent, but he actually put on a Dutch accent for me. <laughs> so it's like Harry Enfield doing a Dutch person. Yes, I can speak in the Dutch language if that's what you want me to do. And he was doing. He was a Dutch guy doing a Dutch accent. I just thought that was brilliant. Okay, now that's not the one I was Is thinking. That not the one that's thinking? not the one I was thinking of. Now have we, got, have we got the slide. Oh, the slide. Now, oh. I, now could you dis- describe what's happening in that slide? For our viewers, uh, for our listeners at home. Sorry. I'm making sure she's got her seatbelt on. That's the, <laughs> she was actually uh, what was she about five months pregnant. When we, when we shot that. And she was actually, I mean, to be fair to you, she was actually talking about... <laughs> she, was, she was actually talking about anatomy. She's an anatomist. But she was just, showing me what, a, what that bone is in her leg. That's yeah. what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah. And then I will defend you to that as well. I don't, know, do you know, I don't know what's worse, that picture or the fact that I spent a long time on the internet to freeze, to, that, to freeze that out. But that is a dead... Get. I've never seen that. That is very cruel. She is stunningly beautiful and gorgeous and brilliant and funny and her husband is very big and lovely <laughs> okay so we'll take, take it off quick um so we're running uh, just last question now so we're running out of time we could be here all night i'm sure so of all the things from the cv the, the writer actor comedian performer is there anything left and what would you like to do what would you what would you i, I mean I, it, it is writing as writing is the thing i've always wanted to do and always s- sort of long for that time and that's what you want and uh, you know that's what I've learned is that and that's one of the things I put in the book is the the one of the things that they have in Gardenia is time and that's uh, we're very time starved because of the manic nature of our lives and it's and it's and on those few moments I've experienced more so as an adult now is that um, I've got nothing to do today <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere I don't have to go in a car I don't have to rush anywhere that is a huge luxury and it's if essentially it's free if you've got some money to so that you've got enough food to eat that you bought yesterday in a band manic so that you can have a bit of you know so that I mean I, I feel time to sit and write a bit and potter about in the garden is is, you know, that's my massive ambition. <laughs> it's <laughs> fairly low. It seems, well, well, no, it seems achievable. And uh, thank you so much tonight. Please like, give a huge welcome. Robert Llewellyn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, as much as I'd like to take all the credit for tonight can't. Um, there's a lot of hard work that's going on here. I'd like to thank uh, Andrew David as well for his, uh, his beautiful introduction and uh, also ensuring the technical side, the side that is going to get broadcasted that you'll be able to listen to on your way home, but also for the hard work he's done in keeping us afloat and getting the Ofcom license. Uh, that is in no small way down to Andrew's hard work and dedication. 
I'd also like to thank the team here at the LPAC, uh, to Craig, Julie, Mick, and Lauren, uh, and the staff just for sorting everything out. It's a fantastic and versatile venue, and uh, anything we asked for, uh, we got, and we got it with a smile as well, so that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Kathleen Drury has been wonderful as the stage manager tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank Ron, Scott, and Jim uh, for the cameras too. Johnny's wife, Jenny, has been out marketing like crazy, and uh, my wife has been extremely supportive and the most patient woman on the planet, so thanks, so. Um, and talking of Johnny, I'd like to recommend having a producer to anyone. Um, you can't have Johnny, he's mine. Um, he's always there with great ideas, encouragement and professionalism, and occasionally a cup of tea, and in the last show, a chocolate muffin. Um, he's really that good. And lastly, well, it's thanks to you for coming and supporting tonight. We could have done this without you, but we'd have looked very daft. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Thank you.